again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. This week, I'm gonna give you a simple lesson pretty much aimed at beginners looking at a basic fingering for a major scale. The lesson material for this video is all available to download from TalkingBass.net, so just follow the link in the info below. And while you're there, check out the lesson map where you'll find hundreds more free bass lessons on all topics for every level. So uh, go check it out. So first of all, let's just look at a simple common fingering for a C major scale, and then I'll give you a little more information on what scales are and why you need to learn them. So we're looking at a C major scale, so we're going to be starting on the note C, and that's often called the root note, and you might also hear it called the tonic. So that's the first note of the scale. So we need to find a C. So let's take this C here, third fret of the A string, and the scale up and down sounds like this. Okay, so very familiar sound there. You might know that as Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, like the sound of music. And um, we'll just work through, this, uh, through the notes first of all. So we have the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay, so there's no sharps or flats in there, it's just natural notes. So in terms of the frets, we have 3rd fret, 5th fret on the A string, then we have 2nd fret, 3rd fret, 5th fret on the D string, and then 2nd fret, 4th fret, and 5th fret on the G string. And in terms of the fingering on this hand, we have 2nd finger and then 4th finger for the A string, then 1st finger, 2nd finger, 4th finger for the D string, then 1st finger, 3rd finger, 4th finger for the G string, okay? And if you have any, um, if you're wondering what I mean by 1st finger, 2nd finger, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? 1st finger, 2nd finger, 3rd finger, 4th finger, okay? So, that's the notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and that's the pattern, so you want to play it up, and then back down. So when we do that, we have... Okay, and don't worry about playing it in time or anything like that. Just get it under your fingers, you know, just learn it slowly, and then just play it with the correct fingering. And also, if you want a second challenge, uh, with the fingers of this hand, try alternating every finger. So it doesn't matter really, I mean you could work up with just with one finger, you know, just the first finger if you want to. But uh, for a little bit more of a challenge, try alternating strictly one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, so that's just an added challenge there. So that's the C major scale. So that's a very common fingering for a one octave major scale. And once you've got that under your fingers, you want to try moving that shape around the neck. Now, in case you've never done that before, just try to see that fret and fingering pattern and just move it to other areas. So if you wanted to try a D major scale, we could start with the D there, fifth fret of the A string, and we just take that same pattern, and then we just move it up, starting on that D. So again, I'm using that same fingering pattern, second finger, fourth finger, first finger, second finger, fourth finger, first finger, third finger, fourth finger, okay? So if you had your fingers in a one finger per fret stretch there, you can just use the fingering. Two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four. Or you could just see it as a fret pattern, you know, you've got that little move up there of a whole step, then you move to the next string, that little half step there and then a whole step and then we've got that whole step to a half step so either way you can just see it as a fingering pattern or just as a basic fretboard shape but whatever you do you just want to get used to moving that around you can move it anywhere like that so there's a D major if I wanted to play an A major same fingering pattern G major Okay, so you just want to get used to playing that pattern around the neck. So, as a simple exercise for getting used to moving this shape around, let's try moving up the neck one fret at a time. So we begin with the C major scale that we played originally. And don't worry about playing it at that speed, play it at whatever speed that you feel comfortable with. Then we just move up one fret, so we can move up to C sharp. So, and that'll be a C-sharp major scale. So that'll sound like this. Move up another fret to D, so a D major scale. 
and we just carry on all the way up until we reach the C. Now, just in case you have any problems with that, knowing the notes on the neck, always remember that the 12th fret here, that's with the two little fret markers there, that's a repeat of the open string. So there's an open A string. If we move to the 12th fret, we have an A. And all these fret markers up here beyond the 12th fret are the same notes that we have down here. So we started on a C there, that first fret marker, the third fret. So if we go past the 12th fret, there's that fret marker, that's a C. So we know that if we work up the neck all the way up to there, we've got to the C and we can just work our way back. So the whole exercise sounds like this. So that's C major, C sharp major, D major, E flat major or D sharp major, E major, F major, F sharp major, G major, G sharp major, A major, A sharp major or B flat major, B major, and we're back to C. And then you can work all the way back down. I won't waste time going through the whole exercise, but you would work back down to B, B flat, and just work your way back down to C, okay? So, you know, it's not a, the kind of exercise you just want to keep playing over and over again, you know, for years and years and years. It's just a simple exercise just to get used to moving that, uh, that shape around. Once you've nailed that uh, scale pattern, you don't have to worry about this exercise anymore. You could also try playing it uh, with a root note starting on the E string. So we could try a G major scale down here at the third fret of the E string. And play exactly the same exercise. Just work all the way up to the G major up there and all the way back down. So just two simple exercises just to get used to moving that around. Just getting your fingers working, getting used to a little bit of alternating picking perhaps. Cool little exercise. Okay, so that's the basics of the major scale, but what is a scale and what are they used for? Well, the most simple definition of a scale would be that it's any set of notes in alphabetical order between a root note and its octave. So if we take a C as an example and we work through the musical alphabet, we get C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then we're back to C an octave higher. And that order of notes climbing from C to C is a scale. And in this instance, it's a major scale. But there are loads of different types of scales. There are minor scales, pentatonic scales, and loads of other scales with you know weird and wonderful names. But uh, the major scale is the most common. So what makes a major scale a major scale? Well, every type of scale has a certain formula, which you could see as a type of recipe. And this formula is simply the order of whole steps and half steps, or tones and semitones. The major scale has the formula of two whole steps and a half step, and then three whole steps and a half step, or tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. And just in case you didn't know, a half step you could see as the distance of one fret. So C to C sharp is a half step, and a whole step is a distance of two frets. So C to D, two frets there, that's a whole step. So let's have a look at the major scale on one string, and you'll be able to see that formula there. So again, we'll start at the C there, third fret of the A string, and we'll just work up the neck using that formula. So remember what I said, two whole steps and a half step, and then three whole steps and a half step. So C, up a whole step to D, then up another whole step to E, then up a half step, and that takes us to F, then up a whole step again to G, then up another whole step, and we get A, then up another whole step to B, and then finally up a half step to C. Okay, so starting on the C, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay, so that's the formula of the major scale. 
Working up one string like this is an easy way to see that formula of whole steps and half steps, but it's much more useful to know the scale working across the neck, and that's where that common fingering uh, comes into play that I showed you at the start of the lesson. By working out that formula on the A string, we know that the notes of C major are C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and back to C. So if we start again down the third fret of the A string, we can just see how that works when we uh, play across. So we had all the natural notes, no sharps, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So if we start there, C, we look for the next D. There we have it. Then we work across to the next E. So we could have played it there, but instead we'll play it there at the second fret of the D string. Then the next closest one, there's the F and then we work up to the G, and then when we move to the A, we could play that one, but instead we'll play this one. So we're keeping in one position, A, B, C. So that common fingering is just a very efficient way of playing it. There's, there's many, many different ways of playing a major scale, you know. You know, you could play it in lots and lots of different ways, but this that I showed you originally is probably the most common way of playing it, and like I say, it's the most efficient. So that's how we create and play a major scale, but what do we use them for? Well, the major scale can be seen as a palette of notes in much the same way that a painter uses a palette of paints. When we decide to create a piece of music in a major key, we use the notes of the major scale as our palette. And we can make bass lines like this. That was using all the notes of the, uh, of the major scale there. We can make chords from a scale. Or we could make melodies from a scale. In all three examples there, the major scale is the set of notes that we're using to create the music. Now, there's obviously a lot more to music than just randomly selecting a few notes from a scale, but learning that scale is the very first step in understanding more about how music works, and once you have it under your fingers, you'll start to see it popping up more in everything that you play. So please like this video if it's helped and subscribe to the channel for updates on weekly lesson releases. I release a lesson every Friday and we have live streams on YouTube every Sunday. Okay, I'll see you later.